Greetings! Hello there, my name's Dan and welcome to my garden here in Essex in the southeast of the UK. Really can feel the nip in the air. Could be a frost tonight. So today I'm going to be making a video showing you some vegetables I'm currently growing here, some frost resistant vegetables, cold resistant vegetables. I'm also going to be doing some planting today as well. So I've got a variety of winter vegetables growing here, many of which would also give me a second flush in the spring when I finished eating these. So that's absolutely grand. So I've got a variety of vegetables here, pak choy, beetroot, Chinese cabbage, got some spinach, some chard, some kale over here. And over here, I have some Chinese salad, cabbage. I've got some cabbage as well here. And I've also got a late sowing of dwarf beans that I planted in early September. So we'll see how they go. Now they're not hardy, the dwarf beans, more of an experimental thing really. So we shall see how they do. So today we're gonna to kick off our planting with broad beans. This is variety Aquadulcia claudia, which is generally the variety of broad bean recommended for overwintering. So very hardy, said to be hardy, down to about minus 10 degrees C, which is about 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So I like to initially plant my broad beans in cell trays. That way, if I'm waiting for space to be freed up, to later transplant them out, then it gives me a little bit of flexibility. You could straight sow these. I like to wait a little bit before I plant these. Some people do plant them early October, maybe even in September, but I don't like them to get too big because they get too big and then we get snow, windy weather, etc. It can cause damage to the plants. So I want them to be about that sort of height sort of thing before they stop growing and then they are stronger, if you will, to withstand winds harsh weather, etc. So broad beans are actually one of my favorite plants to grow because they're very nutritious and they've got a rich history attached to them. So they're high in fiber, antioxidants, and they're said to have potential benefits for those with Parkinson's disease. But do your own research on this, they're very interesting and said to be eaten by the ancient Greeks and the Romans and also the Vikings and they've been cultivated for many years. They go by different names, so fava beans, fava beans, broad beans and relatively easy to grow to be honest. Some people say that uh, by overwintering them you get your crop before the black fly comes but uh, I'm certainly not so sure about that one. But uh, I'm just planting these in these cell trays like so. So that's just multi-purpose compost I'm growing these in. And broad beans, very interesting. They're said to be able to germinate in very low temperatures. Some sources say as low as zero degrees C, which is about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not so sure about that one, but 10 degrees C is a nice temperature to germinate them. We're getting that about that sort of thing, give or take during the day. So 10 degrees C, that's about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So these should be just fine and probably be up within the next two weeks or so. I am what I am and that's all that I am. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. So today we're going to be sowing some spinach beet, otherwise known as perpetual spinach. So it's not true spinach. True spinach is generally classed as being sweeter and has a smaller leaf. But uh, this is good and it's said to be a bit more resilient than true spinach. So going to put these in here. So these can actually germinate at a relatively low temperature, about seven degrees C, which is about 44 degrees Fahrenheit. They may germinate at a lower temperature than that, but uh, seven degrees should be good. Of course, if you can get it a bit warmer, then that would also be good, but uh, certainly one of those that can germinate at lower temperatures. So I'm sowing these in the cell tray here. The cell tray that I'm using has smaller modules, smaller cells than the ones that I planted the broad beans in. Spinach actually is rich in um, iron and fibre, other nutrients. It's really good stuff and uh, to be honest, relatively easy to grow and I found that the slugs don't seem to like it too much either. So just putting some multi-purpose compost on the top. Once again should probably germinate within two weeks or so. So don't forget your tags, okay? So I like to write the date in which I planted it, 21st of October in this case, spinach beet, perpetual spinach, and then put your tag in. So 
Aquadulture Claudia, so I like to write what it is, broad bean, and also the variety Aquadulture Claudia. That way you can keep records of when you planted so you can see what hopefully goes well and maybe what doesn't go so well learn for the future. So going to water these in with some rainwater from the water butts. So the broad bean should hopefully crop next year, late May, early June, June time. And the spinach will probably get to about this sort of size maybe before around the end of November. And then I can transplant these out. They probably won't get to a good size for eating this year, but next year they'll be ready in the ground. And when the ground warms up in the spring, when the weather hopefully gets better, they can then grow away. So it gives you a bit of an early start, hopefully for an earlier cropping of spinach next year, if for whatever reason, maybe you haven't planted in late summer this year. So you're kind of improving your chance of getting an earlier crop of spinach. So I use this Ford hook giant chard to illustrate my point here. So it's not spinach, it is chard, but it is indeed similar. So I planted these initially on the 14th of July in cell trays, like you saw me just plant the spinach and planted them out here a month or so later. And you can see they've made a nice size. I have actually been eating these. I've been picking them and they just come back really quick. So that's good. So they've had a nice amount of time in the ground with long days and warm temperatures. So they've got to a good size next month, November time the growth will probably get relatively slow maybe even stop depending on the temperature with the shorter days etc so basically what I'm saying is if you've missed doing this you could put some spinach in now and hopefully you could still get an earlier crop in the spring as opposed to waiting for an individual spring sowing. I'll use these warmth loving plants here to illustrate my point about getting some planting in some module trays going whilst you are waiting for plants to crop for the space to then become available for planting out. So aubergines here, I've got two varieties. I've Czech Early, which unsurprisingly is from the Czech Republic, and I also have Long Purple Aubergine, which is bred for European conditions. So these are all very good. The Czech Early is a very heavy crop. I'm really happy with how they've all come on. So I initially planted them on the 17th of February and they came out here two dates between the 2nd and the 9th of May if I remember correctly and the same is about true with the chilies and the peppers as well and also the okra variety super bindi. So if you want to grow okra put super bindi on your list it's a good crop it does well in this climate at least here anyway. So broad beans now Aquadulture Claudia is quite a large variety. They can get about a metre, 100 centimetres tall, which is about 3.3 feet. They can get about one and a half metres tall, and that'd be good if they did, all loaded with crop, that would be brilliant. So that's nearly five feet tall, so that's really good. So I'm going to put some of those in here when these are finished. I'm going to plant them in the ground, and hopefully I'll get some nice big plants. So a few years ago, I remember I grew some broad beans, overwintered them, in pots up against a south facing wall and they really did get big so you can grow broad beans in pots and if you're going to be transplanting them out outside or indeed even under cover like this have them a good meter apart that way the plants can get a good size and they won't be sort of knocking in to one another and also one of the added advantages of me planting them here is if they do get quite big and we end up getting snowfall high winds etc they shouldn't get damaged in here so i just picked these these are Czech Early. They're not large aubergines, but uh, they are good. And as I stated, very heavy cropping. So here, just gonna pick this variety here. So this is long purple aubergine. So that's a nice aubergine to grow. They're both good varieties to grow. So I'm picking some Wongbok Chinese cabbage here. This one's actually starting to heart up, which is very nice. So one thing I've noticed is things like slugs appear to absolutely adore these. I mean, who can blame them, but uh, very light leaves, they taste great as well. You can see the holes in them there, but never mind. That's, uh, they'll get boiled up all the same. Pak choy here, they don't seem to go for that quite as much, but uh, they do like that a little bit as well. 
So you can see here I've got some cabbage. So this is Bacana Chinese salad cabbage. I've also got Durham early spring cabbage and also often them two flower of spring cabbage. And you can see the difference, how much the slugs, etc., really go for the oriental greens as opposed to the standard cabbage. But these are all frost hardy and I'm picking this now some of this bacana and it's really tasty. You can eat this in a salad or you can cook it as well. So today we will finish off the video with looking at this outdoor no dig bed. So you can see I've got some Wong Bok Chinese cabbage there, Autumn King two carrots from a later sowing. I've also got some Komatsuna here. So. You can see I'm using two different covers here. So the Wong Bok has got some of this netting on whilst the Komatsuna has got some fleece on. And the reason is because I'd ran out of netting. So netting would have been the preferred choice, keep the birds off, but um, I only had some fleece here. So one could argue that the extra warmth provided by the fleece could help the Komatsuna to grow quicker, but uh, that really shouldn't be a problem. But uh, by doing this, <laughs> it's also given a little home to slugs and snails. So you've always got to consider with regards to things such as this. And at the back here, I've also got some golden chard, which I've left uncovered, and the birds seem to be leaving that alone. But either way, I've got plenty of greens all coming, and you can see many of my things, they're all maturing at different stages. So the golden chard at the back is very small, and it's incredibly unlikely I'll be getting you know good edible sized leaves from those this year. Of course I could eat them now, but I'd rather let them get bigger in the spring. So successional sowing, and if you've forgotten to sow certain things or haven't done it, you know, spinach, you could put some of that in now as I showed you earlier, and then hopefully you'll get an earlier crop of that in the spring when the temperature warms up. Anyway, thank you very much for viewing. I hope that video has been useful, and if you've got any comments, questions, or whatever, please feel free to post them below and you can like this video if you like it, please feel free to share it with anyone you think may be interested. And if you'd like to be notified of any further videos I put up, please feel free to subscribe. Once again, thanks very much for viewing. See you in the next video.